No particular reason, I just felt like it. So, waiting for a software to catch up here. Uh, as the title suggests, um, clocks, analog and digital. And you can probably see on the screen that I have a couple blueprints slapped into the map. And what I'll do is I'll show them, briefly cover the blueprints themselves, and then I think what I'll do is just force something different, showing actually making it. And I will add it to the player HUD. I'll create a player HUD and just that way it's there. That way, like on the bottom right hand corner of the screen as you're playing, or upper right hand corner or wherever. I think upper right hand corner will be good for a clock. But as you can see, um, if you can see on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you can see my well, all my icons and all my crap down there. But you can see that the clock it says 6:31 p.m. And if you look closely, this one says 6:31, and it shows the seconds. And then if you look at the analog clock, and this isn't my usual template, so I don't have uh, first-person view set up. So um, 6:31, and you can see the second hand ticking on the clock. But let's let it go ahead and click over. What you may or may not be able to see is the minute hand is actually slowly moving. Instead of it, okay, now it just changed over to a new minute and then the minute hand clicks over. Instead of it clicking over, it's slowly moving the entire time to keep progress with the time itself. The hour hand is doing the same thing. So, that's where um, the migraine started, from, you know. Uh, I've been having some, actually they're more of uh, some heavy sinus pressure headaches, but yeah, math and me don't get along too well, and you'll see here shortly. But if you look at both the clocks together, they're right there. Now unfortunately they're working off an event tick, and I really hate working off the event tick, and I could probably restructure it a little bit better so that it does not, but it's updating if you don't know what an event tick does, the event tick is essentially calling basically every frame. So if you're getting 120 FPS, you're you're calling this thing 120 times a second. So not the most optimal way of doing it, but until I can get through these uh, headaches and actually um, move on to uh, a different method, that's what we're using for now. Um, just temporary static meshes that I threw together just to make them functional. Yeah, I probably could have spent some more time and actually put numbers on the clock and the analog clock and things like that, but I didn't. <laughs> um, for those of you who have the simple multiplayer Steam template already, that if you want the project files, then I'll make them available to people who have already purchased that or who have... Um, um, made donations to the channel, so if you want it, let me know. Let me know who you are on YouTube and that kind of stuff, too. So, let's get into it. So, as you can see, the clock hands are all straight up on 12. And that's all part of this right here for the rotation. Um, we'll do the analog clock first, because it's the, the biggest headache. The other clock is, well, I'll tell you what, let's start with this one right here first. I'll show how it works, and then we'll move into how that one works, and then I'll start making the digital portion without the seconds. We'll just do it with um, minutes and hours only, because there's no need to track seconds on, like, you know, in-game time. And it's one thing that I... It doesn't seem like this would be an important thing, but how many times have you been playing a game and you've only got one monitor, like me with three, and I've got a uh, clock, analog clock sitting right there on the... Um, my left hand monitor so I can see that if I can't see bottom right hand corner or wherever else okay I'm gonna play until 645 and then I'm gonna quit I gotta go do something else well <coughs> it'd be nice if you had a clock in the game sure everybody's got a phone but what if your phone's on charge in a different room or the battery's dead or whatever you know it's always a nice little thing to just have a little clock somewhere in game that shows real time, not game time. 
if you want a game time thing, that's up to you. But these are actually clocks that are going to be functional to show actual your time. You can set it up for different time zones or different, you know, like GMT or whatever else. But we're going to set it up for your actual time. So in here, what I've done is created the analog frame, which is just the frame itself and a center point. So I knew where it was. No big deal. I did add collisions to it, but that's not important. Um, the digital clock was just two BSP geometries, one um, that was subtractive so I could push into it a little bit and just applied some materials to it. Nothing to it whatsoever. It's not the point of this to actually be that. But the fun part was, was creating the hands so that the pivot point would be at the end. And if you're interested in that, let me know. That can be a pain in the butt whenever you're using BSP geometries to make your own things like these hands. And then want to be able to control them with the correct pivot point so that whenever you're messing around with it, you can actually pivot them correctly. So let me know, and I'll do a video on that. So let's move on into the actual blueprint portions on the digital clock. Um, first off, before we start looking at the actual stuff, I created variables. I don't even know if I even used them or not. But um, if you look at the viewport, I've added in the mesh and I added in, just type in text, just text render is all they were. So you have one for the hours, minutes, seconds, and your dots to separate them. And then of course the mesh for that. And then I created three variables, one hour, minute, and second. Then if we go into the actual blueprint itself, um, we started off with a now node. The now node is something that I never even knew existed. And essentially what that is, is it's, it's doing a query and saying, what is the correct time now? What is now? And you can see we're going to get the hours in 12 hour increments because, you know, America. Get minutes, get seconds. But all you have to do is just drag off from your now node and you've got... Um, well, you can actually peek through here, date time, date time, time span. There's a bunch of different options, but you can get the date, the day, day of year. You can get hour, hour 12, which means a 12-hour clock system. Um, get milliseconds, minute, month, second, time of day. Get year, uh, is afternoon, is morning and not equal. So you've got a bunch of different things you can actually use and actually build off of the same system here. But all we needed was get hour 12 because I'm doing a 12 hour clock. If you live somewhere or you want military time or a 24 hour clock system then you can change this around to actually instead of get hour 12 to just get hour. So just setting that variable. This variable right here is this. So all we did was we drug this in here and there we go. Set hour, set minute, set second. And then for that we grabbed our hours, drug a reference into it just by dragging it into the, to the uh, blueprint there. And what we're doing is with our reference to our hours we're setting text. So all you have to do is just drag off from that and type in set text. The target naturally is going to be automatically put in, but you're getting your two text from your hour. So you drag from here to there, and it's going to give you a return value into two text. So you drag off from here and do two text. Um, I'm not sure if you can actually drag straight across to there and it automatically gives you the node. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, we'll find that out for sure here whenever we do it in the um, the heads up display. And that's all we're doing is we're setting our text. Mm, I'm sorry. Um, text messaging. So that's it. 
I uh, don't even have anything on Event Begin Play. Unfortunately, we're running off of the event tick, like I said. And then from there, set hour, set minute, set second. And then we start setting the text value for each one of them. You could, if you wanted to, split it off and make it look prettier and whatever else. I made it functional. So I'm just going to take this and drag it off screen. Then we'll take a look at the um, the other one, the analog clock. This is the one that caused me some headaches. And it was all this part here. <laughs> okay. I will try to explain it the best that I possibly can. It took me a while to kind of hash through this and actually think. And I don't like thinking too much. It causes headaches. So again, we got our now. And then get hour 12, get minute, get second. Then starting from get second, or seconds, we're going to multiply that by 6. If you need me to explain all the mathematics, I will, but not while I still have a current headache. But I will leave this on screen, screenshot it, pause it right here, do whatever you got to do so that you can see what it is. But essentially, from here, we are multiplying it by 6. And we're going to make a rotator and then move into, and I'll show you that part here in just a minute. So. You also want to come over here and you want to convert this to a float so that you can add this to the seconds after your get minute, multiplying it by this, which is the amount of seconds in a minute to complete a full minute. So you're adding these two together, and then multiplying it by 0.1, and then you're making your rotator. And then for your hours, you're doing basically the same thing, um, you're multiplying. 60 times the current number of minutes that you add those two together and multiply it by 60 for number of yeah you get the picture here number of minutes in an hour number of seconds in a minute that kind of stuff um, but to get the rotator information and we're working off of the yaw is you end up having to multiply it by 0 0.00833333333333 um, it's one of those things where the three goes on for about 400 million places. But you can round it off. You can put three, four, or five, whatever. This is just what it's going to come out to. Um, and then make your rotator. Then all you're doing is you're getting a reference to your minute hand. And let's look at the viewport really quickly. Um, all the hands are on here. The pivot points are right here so that they're going to pivot around the middle. And. Yeah, they're all off the zero axis. You can scale this clock once you've got it in your, your scene. You don't have to make it that big. You can also use smaller clocks, whatever you want. The size of them. It's not the size that's important here. Uh, so yeah, you're just getting your you're gonna set your relative rotation of your hour hand based off of your rotation you got from here. Same thing for your minute hand off of your your minute logic, and then second hand off your second logic. It's easy to comprehend once you start breaking down the mathematics of it. But all of this data right here is working towards getting your rotator, making your rotator. So I'm not going to get too in depth on that. Like I said, you can copy that for now. I just, I'm sweating in this room, so I need to get the air conditioner back on. All right, so if I'm going to add one to my player HUD, and you can see I don't have anything for a player HUD whatsoever, so we're going to make a quick player HUD, nice and easy. We're going to put the time in the upper right-hand corner. So the first thing we need to do is, and I guess it doesn't really matter here all that much, um, I'll put it inside here, because this is just a temporary project. Actually, no, let's do things right. New folder and UI, you can call it whatever you want. So user interface. We're going to do a user interface widget blueprint. We're going to call this player underscore HUD. 
we're going to do part of it, but we're not going to be able to finish it until we do a few other little things here. But what we need to do is, first off, we want to do upper right hand corner. I'm going to grab an image, drag it in here, but now that's good enough. Let's go with the color. We're going to change this by dragging this down, dragging you down, thank you, and changing the alpha to point three. That way it's kind of a see-through black background and we're going to set the Z order to negative <clears throat> one so that it stays behind what we're going to put in next and we need to anchor this to the top right hand corner compost and save then we're going to need to get one two three three text for right now, we're going to get it in here, and this text is going to be um, 12. Center it up, and then shrink it down. Actually, we want to um, align it to the right. We'll make it pretty later. We just need to get it functional first. So our next text block is just going to say... that. Now we need one more text. And we do need to make sure that we are anchoring these to the upper right hand corner so they stay in the correct place. And our final text we can make to say 59, 56, whatever. Doesn't matter what comes up right here. Hmm. Yeah, we should be able to fix that in the actual part of it. Now, one thing that will happen that I noticed that kind of annoyed me. Yes, I know. Something that annoyed me. What a shock, right? So, just want to do this, center it up in there, grab this, shrink it down, just kind of make it fit a little bit. I don't know, something that made me, you know, angry and stuff. We're not going to change the text on it just yet, um, and we're not going to worry about this just yet. Yeah, I think we could do it all in here. Um, we need to go ahead and get the thing functional for the player. So we're going to do our player blueprint. And in my event begin play, I've already put in here the uh, set input mode to game only and get a reference to your player controller. Set show mouse cursor to false. That gets rid of your mouse cursor when you first start playing, which can be a pain in the rump and it torques my. Mm, yeah, anyway. So we're going to move on, and we're going to actually use this same part here, and we are going to maybe I'll do it from here. Create widget, connect that into here. The widget that we wish to create is player HUD, and we want to actually we can do it from here. Um, Add to viewport. So that's going to create the widget and make it visible to us. So if we go in here and hit play now, you can see that we actually have the clock playing in the upper right hand corner. It doesn't show the time yet. We need to actually put that together. But we want to make sure that it was functional and there. All right, so we're done with you. Let's go back here to our player HUD. And we do have an event tick we can actually operate off of. And from here, we're going to go ahead and do our three variables, which is going to be um, hours. And this needs to be an integer. This needs to be. 
be a standard integer, not a 64. And we also need another one, which is going to be minutes. All right, so hours and minutes. We need to be able to display them. So we need to actually give them values now. So what we'll do is we'll plug them in here. We can just left click, drag it in, set, or we can hold down the alternate key, left click and drag it in, drop it, and we get the set node. So we're going to plug those in because that's what we're going to build. We'll move them as needed. So now, oh, just so you can see, whenever I was typing in now, you also have UTC now, which you can report back the UTC time instead. But I don't care about UTC, I care about now. So from now, get our 12, because America. And get a minute. Um, hmm, it's complicated. Get our 12. Huh, okay. And get minute. Okay, also complicated. Um, yes, it will bug me if I don't make it somewhat clean. So we're setting our variables here, and now we're going to be able to call those variables. Compost, save, go back to our designer. Now, if we scroll back in on our let's do minutes, whatever. And if you look, text and then bind. We're going to click on that and create binding. And it says get text zero. I don't like that. Get minutes. So we're going to get our minutes and what goes in right there as text is going to replace the two numbers. So what we need to do here is get a reference to our minutes and I know it's complicated plug it in there um, yeah that's it compost save let's just do a quick run here okay we had it set originally as 56 the time is 6.53, so we know our, our minutes are actually working correctly now. So we can go back over here, and we don't need you anymore. And go back to our designer, click on our hours, same thing. Click on bind, create binding. Change that to say get hour. And... Just drop that in here. Plug that in there. And it are done. There. Gonna adjust that. Now, there is one other thing that we're gonna have to run into here. And if you notice how on this one right here, it says 0, 09, then goes to 10. What's going to happen is if we leave it the way it is, should have closed it yet. What will happen is in this two text integer, we go to this right here, and what will happen is whenever we look at our clock in, in our, our widget, and it's kind of hard to see, instead of it saying 010203, whenever it, it rolls over and starts again, it'll just say 1 and there'll be an empty space there. It just won't look right. So if you go into your two text, it doesn't really matter on the hours all that much, but minimum number of digits, two. Maximum number of digits, two. Uh, same thing on minutes. Just click the arrow, change this to two and this, two. Compost, save, and now whenever it rolls over, it will actually not show one, it'll show zero one. 
So that's that. We just created a little temporary clock that we can make it look as nice as we want to, but pff, nothing complicated. Doesn't have to be complicated. Just a simple clock system that works that actually shows real time for the player. So if you're in a multiplayer game, it's if we're in different time zones, it's going to be querying that doesn't sound like a good word. It's going to find out what your time is and display your time based on your time zone. It's basically syncing with your computer, your computer's clock. It actually gets your local time. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And for the people who have the Simple Multiplayer Steam template, um, who have already purchased it from me, it... If you want these blueprints, let me know. I'll make them available. They're very small blueprints. I can just drop them directly as is, or I can package up the whole project, and you can have the whole project. Um, unfortunately, though, I did put starter content in here, so that's going to add another 700 megabytes to the frickin' file size. But, you know, the basic blueprints are going to work no matter what. Uh, just let me know if you need them. I'll probably do another stream here shortly, and we'll talk about the latest version of the Simple Multiplayer Steam template. I'm still going to do a few more updates to it and a few more changes to it, um, but it is functional. I have currently the 4.23 and 4.24 versions uploaded and ready to go now. Um, they are version-specific due to the plugin that's part of it. It's a third-party plugin that's made by a very reputable person. Um, that I've been using this template for a couple of years now and it works. It just plain works. Um, and I've used it on... Let's see, let's make sure we save all. Save selected, thank you. I've used it on so many projects over time that, um, you know, I've just gotten used to it and it works. It just works reliably. And... Uh, do, 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 do. Like, one of the, the more recent projects was that uh, the build demo. If you guys have watched that one, this is actually a standalone playable demo of that's multiplayer. And what I've been working on with this one is improving the, the save game system to go along with it. Won't make this project available. You can download the playable version of it, but the simple multiplayer Steam template will do this. It'll give you your access Steam community here. It puts up your Steam username and avatar, uh, and it allows you to either play in single player. Hit that. Come on. There we go. I can see I've already started doing something with this one right here. I've started building with this one. Put that little brown spot on the ground there for multiplayer, so people were reminded this is where the spawn point is. So if somebody's new is joining the, the actual game. But essentially what this... Um, is, I left the... Sorry, I left the um, the text up and the, the debug text in there. Working doors. Um, you can lay down structures. You can improve them, you can destroy them, um, that kind of stuff. But this is single player. These are the default tile sections for the ceilings. But you can go back to the main menu. Multiplayer, host game, call it whatever you want, make it. And now anybody who has this will be able to join you in a multiplayer game. And save game system works and how the save game system works in this particular project is weird only the server saves the client does not save in multiplayer there was no reason for the client to save anything because the server well you you can't play on the server unless the server is playing um, but you can actually put down all your stuff here build your buildings, that kind of stuff. But this is what you get with the Steam multiplayer template is the ability to have a single player or multiplayer host or find games and exit game. It's simple, it works, it's lovely. Love you guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you later.